I am continuing to work through my chapter summaries for this is John Batista College Physics. I'm on chapter 23, Reflection and Refraction of Light. Okay, now there's a bunch of very conceptual stuff in here, and I think I have some demos which I don't normally do that may be a disaster, but I'm going to do it anyway because, right, you just got to do what you're going to do. Let's talk about um, there's a thing in there about. Uh, Huygens principle, expanding wavefronts, stuff like that. And the pictures are fine, but there's no real thing that you can use to calculate stuff with that at this level. Um, so let's just talk about reflection. Let's just go ahead and talk about reflection. I want to talk about reflection uh, and then refraction. And then I'm going to turn off the lights and show you some demo. So if I have um, a smooth, very smooth surface like this, and I have light come down it's going to reflect off at some angle. Theta incident is the angle of incidence. Theta reflected. And for uh, a normal surface, the law of reflection says theta i is theta r. So angle of, uh, angle of incidence, angle of reflection are equal. And I'll show you that. Now, of course, that doesn't always happen. Uh, this is what we call specular reflection. Spec. Qlar. I think I spelled that right. We also have this. If this is actually rough, then when light comes down right here and right here and right there, they're going to all reflect off at different angles because the surface isn't exact. They actually reflect off at their own angles, but you can get something like this. So the light rays reflect at different angles, whereas this, all the light rays would reflect the same way uh, in a nice orderly thing. And so they come in ordered, they leave ordered to here, they come in ordered, and they leave not ordered. And this is diffuse reflection. And I'll show you an example of that. I think I spelled that right. And that's for flat plane. And we're going to use curve surfaces when we talk about mirrors. Um, <clears throat> now, that's reflection. For refraction, what happens is if I have uh, two surfaces, two materials, and I have light come down like this, uh, at some angle, we'll call that theta i angle of instance. It's going to actually bend this way or the other way, it doesn't really matter, depending on the indexes of refraction. So these are two different, this is a, a different surface here, different material. And I mean, it could have the same index of refraction. It could be different, no, it can't be the same material with different indexes. Well, technically it could if you change the temperature. But blah, 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 blah. okay. So we can get a relationship between this angle in, the angle out, and the two index or fraction. Remember, index or fraction tells us the ratio of the speed of light divided by the speed of light in that material. So air is as close to one, vacuum is one, uh, glass is like 1.5 or something like that. But from this we get the uh, refraction, we get Snell's law, and if you work hard maybe one day you'll have a law too, which says in one sine theta 1 is into sine theta 2. Now, I want to do two important things. Um, first, it's possible that if I have light come at this angle right here, some angle of instance going this way, from a higher index refraction to a lower index refraction, the angle of refraction can be 90 degrees right along the surface. This is actually a pretty cool thing. And when this happens, the light doesn't pass through. Normally, when you have light hit a different material, some of it reflects off uh, where those two are equal and some passes through. But at this angle, it only reflects. And we call that the critical angle. So I could say uh, N1 uh, sine of 90, right, because that's a 90 degree angle, is equal to N2 sine of theta c. They call it the critical angle. So if you solve this for the critical angle, theta c, since the sine of 90 is 1, right, I had to think for a second, this is going to be equal to the inverse sine of n1 over n2. And that's that angle that it totally reflects. If you've ever been underwater at a pool, this you get this really cool effect. I'm going to go ahead and draw this, and then I'll show you some demos. Now I'm going to show you one more thing. Suppose you're at the bottom of a pool, and you'd be saying, hey, why am I here? Just, did you ever see that movie, uh, The Graduate? He was at the bottom of the pool, right? And here's the water. Suppose it's really smooth. Then uh, when you look at stuff, 
right? The, if light comes this way, it reflect down. If light comes this way, it reflect back. So you get this like cone through which you can see anything past this, the light goes that way and then it comes down. The light goes that way and then it comes down. So you're really looking at outside of the pool in this small cone. Everything else you're looking at the bottom of the pool because light goes the same way. Uh, and, and it's really kind of a cool effect. And there's some cool pictures of this. You see outside and then when you look over here, you see the bottom of the pool. Now, if it's a dark pool or if it's in the ocean, you just see nothing because there's no, no light coming from up there. Okay, I want to I talk about one more thing with Snell's Law and refraction and then I'm going to show you some uh, demos that hopefully work and if they don't, then I don't know what to say. Then I'll probably delete the video and you'll never know anyway. So they're going to work or not. So you've seen this um, prism thing, right? Where you have a glass uh, like that and what happens is when light comes in, it's going to refract and bend and then it's going to, well actually got to come in at an angle. That was bad. I'll draw it right here. Light comes in like this, it refracts and bends, and it refracts and bends this way. But, but, it turns out that different colors are going to bend different amounts, and that's over-exaggerated. But we're going to get red light over here, violet over there, and different colors have different index of refractions, and we call this dispersion. And it's kind of important. Um, it has a lot to do with how we figure out what light is in, what colors of light we have. It has a lot to do with astronomy when we make telescopes out of lenses because different colors bend different amounts and all that stuff. Okay, so that, and yes, the dark side of the moon. I think the colors are backwards on the pink flory dark side of the moon uh, logo, but it's the same idea there. Let me show you some demos and then I will show you, uh, I really want to get into uh, lenses. I'm going to show you, um, yeah, I'll do the demo now. Okay, demo time. So I'm going to put down a blank piece of paper. And I'm going to turn off these lights, so this may get weird. And then I have, there. So this is a little physics demo, and it allows us to make a light source. There's just one light beam. It's actually just a, a, a light in here with a little slit, and so only light can go through that way. Now, let's say we take a flat mirror. Here's my mirror, and I put it right there. And there you can see the law of reflection, right? So this angle and that angle should be the same, no matter where I turn it, right? So now they're both very tiny. You can split that. It's perpendicular. And then they're very large. So that's that's your normal reflection. That looks pretty cool. Uh, just to be clear, if you want to do diffuse reflection, here's a piece of paper. Notice that we don't get a line coming off of there, but you can see a little glow, right? So this light comes in, different parts hit the paper on different angles, and it reflects in different ways. So you get this uh, broad, spread out thing. That looks kind of cool. Okay, what about... Uh, the index or fraction. Here is another object. This is a piece of acrylic or something. Let's see, that, that looks pretty good. Okay, I want to get a blank sheet of paper. So let's just start right here. Um, notice that if the light is coming in perpendicular, theta, this is n1, inside of there is n2. If theta is zero, if theta i is zero, then theta r is zero. Right, because I have zero times n, solve for theta two, you get zero, you have to, it's the only way. But as I turn change this angle, we can see that the light does indeed bend. This is actually works pretty well, right? The light bends. You can actually see something else. Not only does the light bend as it goes through, it also reflects. And what's that line right there? Well, it reflects over here. See, you can barely see that, but it reflects on here and it comes out, and that's kind of cool. Um, if we want to get extreme angles of bending, this is a, if you go through a, a, a block like this, it's going to bend, but then when it comes back out the other side, it's going to bend the complete opposite way. So you're going to get just this angle, this line parallel to that one shifted down a little bit. Now, if I use a triangle, here's my triangle. Let's see if I can get this to, uh, 
that's a pretty good picture right there. I want to see. You can barely see um, the color separation there. It's not perfect. Probably this beam's really too wide. I wonder if I can make that. I would, if I had a small, a thinner beam, I think you could see it a little bit better, this dispersion there. Um, oh, that, look at that. Okay, let's try it one more time. Right here, I'm going to try to get it to bend. The more it bends, the more dispersion you get. You can't really tell. Okay, but there you go. Dark side of the moon. Um... So that's index refraction, that's reflection off of plain flat mirrors. Okay, let's look at Brewster's angles, then we're gonna look at uh, mirrors and lenses, and then I'll come back and show you all those things uh, with this same demo. How's that sound? So I'm gonna turn these lights back on, hold your eyes bright. You know, it is nice that the camera adjusts pretty well. I'm pretty impressed with the camera. Brewster's angle. So we talked about polarized light. Uh, it turns out that when light comes down and it reflects, so we have theta i, theta i, right? The angle of reflection is the same. And then we have this, uh, theta r ref refracted. And this is n2 and this is n1. When this angle is the same as that angle. Something magic happens. This light becomes polarized. No, not polar. Polarized. That's better. And the angle that this happens at is called Brewster's angle. And so if you just say that that angle is that and then you use the law, then, then that's this. Then we could say the Brewster's angle is the inverse tangent of N1 over N2. It's not that big of a deal. Um, it is kind of cool that polarized light comes from uh, reflected stuff, and that's why you have polarized sunglasses. They they block that glare off of certain surfaces, uh, but that's that. Let's get into uh, lenses and mirrors. And so we first have this idea about real versus virtual images. So we can make an image uh, with a flat plane mirror. That's, that's what you look at when you're uh, over here, like that, away from the mirror. One of the things that we like to do is to draw these light ray diagrams. In a light ray diagram, we're going to draw a line to represent light coming off of that object. And then when that light comes off this way, it's going to bounce straight back. Now let me draw another line from that same point it's going to come down here, and then that line that's going to uh, reflect off like that. So if you are over here somewhere, you would see these two light rays. I see this light ray, and I see that light ray coming that way. And our brains say, hey, those two things came from the same spot. And so we're going to trace them back behind the mirror, and it looks like they came from there. And that's where your image would be. So this is what we're going to call the distance P for objects and Q for images. So P is an object. And different books use different things, and it's not the best. Uh, and here you have to mind your P's and Q's, right? Image. And so for a flat plane mirror, P and Q are the same. But Q is behind the mirror. And so we actually get, since it's behind the mirror and the light rays don't actually cross there, this is a virtual image. Um, so go ahead and I'm going to give you a bonus question. Uh, how big of a mirror do you need to see your whole body? And what happens as you get further away from the mirror? And you might want to just test that. And you could draw pictures and find that out, but I'm not going to answer that question. So that's a, a, a plain mirror. Um, because, and you can do the geometry here, because of this angle is the same as, uh, let's see, this angle is the same as this angle, and this is the same as that, then the only way that, that can make, these two are similar triangles, these two have the same distances, they have to be the same distance away, the end. Um, let's see, what if you have a curved mirror though? This becomes much more interesting, and I can show you this, and we'll do a real, a real image. So if I have a curved mirror like this, a concave mirror, 
and light comes in. Let's suppose I have light coming in uh, parallel light rays. It comes in like this, and it reflects off, and it's going to pass through a point right there, and then this light ray is going to pass through that same point. All the parallel light rays are going to pass through the same point. We call that point the focal point. Um, and it turns out that if this is a spherical mirror, then that focal point is half the radius of curvature. Now, suppose I put an object near this. So let me draw this uh, a little bit bigger. And here's my object. A lot of times we use an arrow for an object. Uh, and then there's my focal point. Now, we can draw three light rays that help us figure out where this image is. The first one is to have a light ray from here come in and hit the mirror and then bounce, go through the focal point. The next one is that I can have a light ray go through the focal point. If it does that, it's going to come out parallel. And then, oh, that's a bad picture. And then I don't like to draw three because I don't never get them to line up. But if a light ray hits the middle, it's going to bounce off with the same equal and opposite angle. Oh, I made it work. And you can see right here that all those light rays cross. So if you're over here looking at it, uh, it looks like an upside down object distance. So this would be P, this would be the distance Q, which would be positive because it's on the correct side of the mirror. Uh, and that's the focal length, which would also be uh, positive in this case. And this is a real image. It's a real image because the light rays actually cross there. If you get a, um, if you get a mirror like this, it's not just that you can see it; you can project that image onto something. You can you can make uh, an image on paper. It's really cool. I'll show you that with a, a lens. If I no, I won't, because I didn't bring one. Sorry. Okay, you can do it with yourself, uh, or, or with a curved mirror. You can project an image onto a surface with that. Now, what if I have a mirror the other way, a convex mirror? Let's draw a diagram for that. Say here's the focal point. There's a focal point on both sides. And then here's my image. I'm going to draw a light ray coming in, and it's going to bounce as though it came from the focal point. And then if I draw a ray right here at the middle, it's going to bounce off at the same angle. And you can see that those light rays are not going to cross. But we can project them back to where it looks like they cross, and that would be our image. In this case, that would be a negative image distance because it's in the wrong side of the mirror, uh, and it would be upright. So upright images, if you only have one thing, one lens, one mirror, an upright image is going to be virtual. Real images are going to be uh, upside down. Let's look at some images, and then I'll show you uh, the thin, I'll show you the lenses and I will show you the, the main equation that you're going to deal with in all these situations. So oh, I'll need some more paper. Okay, I'm, I don't want you to be scared, but I am going to turn off lights again. Light off, light off, and then here's my light source right there. Now let's look at a con, and I'm actually going to turn on uh, multiple beams. How do you do that? There. So those are parallel rays, mostly parallel. And then here's my uh, concave. I'm going to switch to two. There. Um, let me just get it lined up. I don't know if you can see that quite well, but when these light rays come in, they cross right there at that point. That's the focal point. Okay, so these uh, converge at that focal point. Now, if I have uh, a concave mirror like that, you can see that they don't hit. These come off and bounce away. It looks like they, they're meeting somewhere behind the mirror. Let's just go ahead and look at some lenses too. We also have a converging and diverging lens. Here is a converging lens. And it, no, it fell over. And you'll notice if I have parallel light rays come in, they, they meet at a focal point over here. And that's my focal point. And we're going to do the same thing with that. 
And then I can also have a diverging lens. In this case, the light rays come in and spread out and looks like they came from a point over here. Okay, so this would have a negative focal length. This one would have a positive focal length. Okay, that wasn't as great as I thought it would be, but that's fine. Let's turn the lights back on. Shield your eyes. I really use bright lights. I didn't realize how bright they were. So let's go back to this. I don't have to draw a light ray diagram. If I know uh, the object distance, P, I can solve for the image distance. So we have this famous equation, 1 over P plus 1 over Q equals 1 over F. So remember, P, object. For mirrors, Q, Q is image in front of mirror. So this is the positive realm. This is negative. If you have anything over there, it's negative. And you technically you can have image, I mean object distances over here if you use more than one uh, device. In this chapter, they only deal with one device, one optical piece. The focal point F is going to be positive for if it's on the same side as the positive stuff. So for converging, for let's say concave. And then it will be negative for convex. And then with that, I can, I can solve for anything I don't know. If I know the location of the object and the focal length, I can solve for the location of Q. And that works for these, that works for these, right? I just have a negative focal length, that's all. If I solve for the image distance and I get positive, it's on this side and it's a, it's a real image. If I solve for the object distance over here, it's negative. The image distance is negative and it's virtual. Now we actually do have one other thing that we need to consider. If I have an object uh, that has a height h and maybe it makes a, a virtual image over here, h prime, then I can calculate the magnification as h prime over h, which turns out to be negative q over p. So if these are upright, see, this would have a negative Q value. So when I put negative, I'd get a positive magnification. A negative magnification just means it's upside down. And then we have uh, the same thing with lenses. If I have a converging lens uh, and I have my object right here, uh, P is going to be positive. Uh, if the image is over here, uh, Q is positive. So this is the positive side for uh, images. This is the positive side for objects. It's like, where should it be? You should get an image on this side. If you get an image over here, it's, it's negative image distance. And the focal point uh, F is positive. Now, if I have a diverging lens, uh, still, here's my object. P is positive. This, that's an N right there. And then Q would be positive over on this side and F is negative. I know that's a lot. There's a little table in the book that I would highly recommend you look at to keep these things uh, straight. Uh, and I'm not going to solve any of these problems. I'm just, this is just a chapter review. We can solve some problems later. Uh, but that's it for, we really have five devices. We have a plain flat mirror, which we have a concave, convex, converging lens, diverging lens. Now the real magic comes if I combine these two things together, but that's not in this chapter. Okay, the end.